Klon Centaur is legendary, but legendary doesn't mean perfect. The original design has two quirks that still frustrate some players to this day, and the Hagerman Neo Klon, well, it fixes both of these issues. So let's dig in. Look, the Klon is iconic. There's no doubt about it. It's not part of the argument here. This is a cheap DIY kit you can get off the web. People try to mimic the enclosure, the knob style, the little centaur on the pedal. So it is an iconic pedal. It's always gonna be iconic, but it's not because it's iconic and legendary that it doesn't have quirks. In fact, this particular design has two of them. One of them is the higher than expected noise floor. And the other one is that when you have the gain all the way down, it's pretty flat and neutral. There's like no clipping going on. Jim Hagerman designed the Neoclon to keep everything that people love about the Klon while removing the things that hold it back. When you play with the original Klon circuit, when you have the gain all the way down, it's not doing anything. There's no clipping going on. And this is kind of unusual in most pedals when you instantiate them, even at lower volumes, there's some level of clipping going on. But with the original Klon circuit, nothing's really happening until you reach a certain threshold. The Neo Klon remaps this behavior. Instead of doing almost nothing until it hits a certain threshold, it introduces harmonic breakup earlier and it ramps it up more gradually. It's still subtle, but now the low gain range actually does something. It feels musical and responsive instead of flat and clean. <laughs> Now, the second thing you may not have realized was an issue with the original design is that around two o'clock is where you hit the maximum ceiling. That's where all the headroom is at. Once you pass that, the op amp can't produce more. So what it's doing is, yes, it's actually giving you more grit and more distortion, but it's also bringing up the noise floor. <laughs>
game. The Neo Klon reshapes the gain curve so that the pedal actually introduces gain at lower settings. You get a gentle harmonic texture even with the knob all the way down, which makes it a great clean boost. <laughs> The other improvement with the Neoclon is that the op amp that it uses is nearly double that of the original design of the Klon. That means that when you hit that two o'clock mark, you're not capping out, there's still plenty of room so you can get some beautiful gradual distortion without increasing that noise floor. So that means if you kick the front end of the amp, you have a whole lot of volume and you can also kick your favorite overdrive into even more beautiful distortion. And this isn't speculation on my part. It comes straight from Jim Hagerman himself. His goal wasn't to reinvent the clon, it was to preserve its voice while removing the bottlenecks that were baked into the original design. <laughs> For most people, the original Klon Centaur is perfect as is. But if you're one of those people that wishes that the Klon didn't have such a high noise floor and that you could hit that lower gain much sooner, then the Neo Klon might be the thing you were looking for. It fixes those issues without completely changing the voice of the original Klon. Which one would you pick? Let me know in the comments below. I answer all comments within a week of this video being released. In the meantime, watch the video appearing on screen right over here, and I'm going to see you in the next one. Cheers.